Here we have a question about the difference between variable and absorption income. And this is a very simple question once we identify what we need to do and kind of filter out all the unnecessary information. Mill Corporation had the following unit costs for the recently concluded calendar year, which are the same as the unit costs for the year previous to the recently concluded year. All that's telling us is costs haven't changed. What they are this year is what they were last year. So manufacturing costs, $8 variable, fixed cost three or fixed costs were $3 per unit. Non-manufacturing costs, $2 variable cost, and $5.50 of fixed non-manufacturing costs. Now remember that what we're dealing with here when we're talking about variable and absorption costing is fixed manufacturing costs. And so it's that $3 per unit that we're interested in. Inventory for Mills sold product totaled 6,000 units on January 1st and 5,200 units on December 31st. Mill Corporation uses the first in, first out cost flow assumption. When compared to variable costing income, Mill's absorption costing income is how much? It's higher or lower, and we've essentially got two decisions that we have to make. We need to determine the amount, okay, and we can see here that we've got 2,400 and 6,800, and then we also have to determine whether or not it is higher or lower. Okay, so those are the two decisions that we need to make. We need to come up with the amount and then determine whether it's higher or lower. Now the amount is very simple. It's three dollars fixed manufacturing cost per unit and we know that inventory changed by 800 units. Okay, they had 6,000 units on January 1st and 5,200 units on December 31st. And the cost was the same for both years. So we take that $3 per unit and we multiply it by the change in the level of inventory and we get an amount of 2,400. So we know that it's either A or B. 2,400 is the amount. The question that we have is, is it going to be higher or lower under absorption costing? Now, under absorption costing, those fixed manufacturing costs go into the individual unit. Okay, they're going into that individual unit, allocated to that individual unit. And so when inventory levels go down, it means that we sold everything we produced this period. So all of this period's fixed costs are in, are, have been expensed. They're in that cost of goods sold. And because inventory levels went down, it means some of last year's fixed costs, which under absorption costing were put into those individual units, and on the balance sheet and inventory at the end of the previous year, those fixed costs, which we just calculated to be 2,400, those fixed costs are also going to be expensed as cost of goods sold in this period under absorption costing. And so under absorption costing, what we have is our inventory, I'm sorry, our income under absorption costing is going to be lower than it would have been under variable costing. And so our correct answer there is choice A. Under absorption costing, our income would have been $2,400 lower than it would have been under variable costing. And so in this in question, all this information about variable cost per unit, irrelevant. The fixed non-manufacturing cost per unit, irrelevant. What we're looking at is that change in inventory and that fixed manufacturing cost per unit. That's all the information that we need in order to answer this question.